Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting, thanks for stopping by, and if you're returning, I, I'm really happy you're here. Um, today I'm going to do something different. Um, I've never done a Zen Tangle tile demonstration um, on this channel. So I thought what I would do is do, I, I like to do more illustration and, and that type of thing, but I thought what I would do is actually teach the Zen Tangle method, the process of how we do a tile from the beginning steps of gratitude to the why we put the dots in the corners, um, the border, why we use a string, and then I wanted to put it together, but I wanted to put a different spin on it. Um, I wanted to include as many tangles as I could. So this is kind of if you want to pick and choose um, a different style of tangle. I find these really, really fun. Um, so I am going to, I'm going to demonstrate today um, all within this tile. So if it moves too fast, just just pause it. Um, work on the tangle you like. Um, practice till you feel comfortable with it. Um, save it. Watch it later. Um, you know, don't try to don't try to perfect everything at once. But just give them a try, and I promise, as you work on them, they become so much easier. Um, today, I want to work with the tangle. This is one of my absolute favorites. I use it in almost everything. <laughs> it's striping and um, it makes wonderful botanicals and I really enjoy this. It looks complicated but it's really not. It's very simple to do. You'd be surprised. Um, we're also going to do Shattuck. Um, this one has uh, four lines, four, five sections, four lines on it and I just wanted to incorporate um, one of them in the tile. So I started this string with a diagonal line so that I could demonstrate that, um, that shattuck there. We're also going to do Mysteria, which is basically holly ball, but it's got a lot of twists and turns and it's smaller and you can take it as far as you want to go or as few lines as you want to do. It's just curvy lines with orbs and or circles in between. Um, once you learn this, you can take off and do lots of other things for the for the fillers. And another one of my favorites is jetties. And I show you how I use it in two forms. Um, one is going to be um, kind of a stacked version and the other is in between bales, which we have done before. So I'm going to show you how I use it in between bales. So with all that being said, um, I think it'll be fun. I hope you enjoy. It's, it's a little beyond the basics of Crescent Moon, Holly Ba, um, well, bales is a beginning tangle, but they're, they're definitely tangles you can do with practice. So I would say that even if you're brand new, just just start, just give it a try and see how it goes. Um, the one thing I don't talk about is um, ordering, which is the means of drawing behind or an outline. Um, that's one thing that's in one of the more beginner videos, but everything else is, is kind of self-explanatory. So um, I really walk you through. And again, we'll start from the basics, just the Zentangle tile. If you don't have one of these, grab a sketchbook, draw a square, any size square, and a pen will we'll do. Um, anything but ballpoint, just a, a fine ink pen. So um, with all that being said, I, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If these are tangles you already know and um, something else interests you, um, please skip ahead, but I'm really happy you stopped by, and I hope you're having a very nice week. And, um, with that, let's go, because the dogs are here, so... <laughs> if you want to see one of the ones who is always interrupting and intruding, <laughs> he's the only one I can pick up. <laughs> this is Blue. <laughs> and you're my biggest barker, right? Right? 
<laughs> he is a barker. So anytime you hear like little, little sounds in the background, it's usually him. So you want to take over the camera, right? <laughs> All right. Have a great day, evening, wherever you are. And I hope you enjoy. See you soon. Okay, let's start with our pen. I'm using a Pigma Micron pen, a 0.05 or a 1. Your lines will be heavier if you use the 1. It's easier to create fine lines with a 0.05. I'm working on a 3.5 by 3.5 square tile, and that is from Zentangle and you can get these at zentangle.com. If you don't have these, don't, don't worry about it. Go ahead and take a sketchbook and draw a square and follow along with what I'm doing. No plan. This is a time to relax. You might have a few tangles to reference you know you feel like using, but that's it. When meditative drawing with the Zentangle method, we always talk about the practice of gratitude and appreciation. Taking a few simple deep breaths and thinking of all we are grateful for to put us in a more relaxed state and clearer mind. Let's begin our design. We are going to start by placing four light dots in our corners. I'm not measuring out. It doesn't have to be specific. I'm simply connecting these lines by drawing a line as a border. It does not have to be straight. It can have a curve, whatever you want it to be. This really takes out the fear of drawing or asking, what am I going to draw? We start with something, something simple by placing those four dots. This just suggests a perimeter, something that I can work in. So now that we've got our perimeter, the next thing is to add a string. A string is simply a light pencil line we draw within our border. The string simply separates sections. The randomness of your string will give you so many different options to put your tangles within. For this tile, I'm going to draw a parallel line going from one side to the other because I want to demonstrate Shattuck. I'm making these two parallel lines so that I can put Shattuck within this section. Now I'm going to go ahead and place the outline or, or ordering this line because Shattuck goes in between and I know that I want an outline. So this isn't something I would normally do but I'm doing it ahead of time. Just to remember that I'm going to put that specific tangle there. Now I'm going to draw just a curvy line from one corner to the other. Now this gives me four, five sections to work with, to put my tangles within. And again, it's just a suggestion. You don't have to stick with this. And I'm going to pick this section here to work with. You can start with any section you choose. I'm going to use a 0.03 micron because it's thinner. If you have a 0.05, go ahead and work with that. It's fine. Like we did in the previous video, we're going to use the method of Hollybaugh or drawing behind. But this tangle, I want my lines to be more wavy, not as straight. This holly ball is a series of curvy lines that go from one side to the other. They can be straight. You can do whatever you choose to do. Mysteria, they tend to be more curvy. It's a great way to mix things up and achieve a different look. 
Now you see when I'm drawing my line, I stop, pick up, and start again. So I've got a bar that appears to be going underneath this other bar. I turn my tile so that it's easier to get a different perspective and see different places. I could fit in my bars. Always stopping when I hit another object or bar, picking up my pen and going underneath, drawing behind. And I just keep going and filling in those bars. I'm going to put one curvy one here. You can take Mysteria as far as you want to. I'm just going to keep it simple for this demonstration. Mysteria tends to be a lot of curvy lines. Okay, now you have these blank sections in between. And what I'm going to do is fill them with little circles, starting with big, various sizes. In the Zentangle world, these circles are called orbs. And I just rotate between big and small. just filling up that complete section and darkening behind just filling in a little bit of dark it gives it more depth and they're kind of nestled in there okay I've got my first section so I'll move to another and do the same thing So we've got our circles in there now. So really we want to let this dry a second. These pens, they dry fairly quickly, but before you do too much blending on top, you do want to let it dry just a little bit before you move on to shading. I just want to wait a second or two because I want to keep these tangles together. So let's let it dry and then we'll shade Mysteria. Now that that's dried, just a, a few minutes, I'm going to come back and shade 
with my pencil. I'm going to start by looking for my first bar and I'm going to simply put down a little graphic under each um, section that's going under that bar. A little on the edge and a little on this edge. And again, I'm just looking at the bar and figuring out which bar would be going under another. And I'm just putting the graphite down in order to lift that top bar or the overlapping bar. A little at the edge, give a kind of a rounded effect when I blend it out. A little over here and over here. And this final one. And now I'm going to shade the main bar at the edge as if it's dipping and coming in and then maybe where it would dip in just to kind of show the peaks and valleys a little on the up. And then as we're going out, so when I shade this, it'll give it a very three dimension type of look. I'm using the side of my blender and just gently shading that out. Now, if you overshade or lose your white, it's not a big deal. You can always come in with your kneaded eraser. I prefer to use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. I showed a demonstration of that in a previous video. The kneaded eraser, I don't find as precise, but that's what most people have, so I'll demonstrate how I use it. But again, just lightly spreading with the side of that blender all around these bars. Okay, and here's with the, the kneaded I find it difficult to work with these small areas and the kneaded eraser. It's just hard to see what you're doing, but it does do the job. And I could have made this a little smaller. So just continue on and grab out the rest of your highlights if you did use too much graphite. I try to make a point out of the kneaded eraser. That's it. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in and weight the line. Just give it a little bit deeper um, effect. It's a tangle enhancer weighting the line. It just makes it stand out again and brings back any graphite you might have lost. I'm just going along the one side of the bar. I'm going to turn and I'm just going to keep it going along the right side of these bars. Just to make them pop up a little bit more. And as I'm going, if I see that I've missed a little black in between the circles, I'll just go around and, and fill those in and darken those up. And there's more you could do with shading as well, but that's basically it. That's, that's Mysteria. And we just kept it within the one little angle that we had. So let's go on. Let's move on to our middle tangle of Shattuck. And I'll show you how I did it. Now with this Shattuck, I had four different lines. But like I mentioned, we're just, you could put it over here in this section. 
but we're going to just do one across here so I can leave the other sections for other tangles. But I just wanted to show you how, how I do shadow. Okay, so as I highlight over my pencil these two bars, I'm not worrying about following the pencil line. If I see something I need to straighten up, um, that's fine. Just just draw over it and just anything you see you you want to change. It's not a big deal. You don't have to do outlines before like this. I wanted to demonstrate Shattuck as easy as possible in this tile. Shattuck is really simple. You can draw a curved line or you can make them straight in addition to a number of other ways. The first line you simply start by drawing your line above as a reference point. I'm thinking of going with a bit of a curve from one side to the other, and then I'm going to continue down. These lines get shorter and shorter as I come to the end. Okay, now I'm going to work from the corner going the other way and just continue to making these lines. These are ending up to be straighter. I got lost in talking and distracted and turn your tile and begin the other way. The beauty of Shaddock is it's, it just kind of dances back and forth. It's never counting the number of strokes, but rather trusting to change direction when it feels right. And then when you shade these, it just adds layers to this tangle. Now the beauty of turning your tile is it makes it easy for your hand. You don't have to stress or think about where, where are you going to draw next. If you don't turn your tile, it's really easy to get confused. The other benefit about turning your tile is your hand is way more comfortable. Coloring these two really, really turns out pretty. I've colored these in a number of ways using either watercolors or markers or jelly pens or any number of things. But today I'm just focusing on tangling one tail tangle at a time. I'm going to go back and fill in just a few of these. This, this first one got a little crazy on me, but we'll work with it. Okay. Now I've let this dry just a minute because again, I want to stay within one tangle, but I'm going to take my graphite and I'm going to darken. See these lines? I'm just going to make it appear as if the others are like tucking in under. So I'm going to lay down some graphite right where it would kind of go underneath that upper angle. I'll turn and again, this is kind of where it would tuck under right here. Let me, let me show you how this works when I blend it out. See, when I lightly take it from dark to light and spread it down, it gives more of a three dimensional effect, creating more drama. And you can make those even darker. Okay, let's go back and just keep going back and forth, laying down graphite so that those edges of the previous lines tuck in.
back in with my blender and just lightly blend these out like we did the first two. Okay, now that I've got those done, I'm going to go back. This one's kind of crazy. <laughs> I'm going to highlight the edges or the sides so that these shapes look as if they're kind of, you know, tucking in under the border, causing them to pop up even more. And again, if I laid down more graphite and did it darker, it would give a more dramatic effect. Now I'll turn and I'll do the other side and again create that darker shade just along the edges. I don't want to lose my white, but I'm just trying to create enough of a separation to have that highlight be directly on top. And I'll just, you can make these go off the page too. I mean, that would be a cool effect, kind of wrapping around. Or even just around that border, you could kind of curve it. All right, now I'll take my blender and I'll just again stay in the dark and kind of spread it out lightly. I'm using the side of my blender. Spread it out lightly so that it gives that appearance of a dimension and on this side too. Shading really is, adds so much to your tangles. It's really where your tangles come to life. Okay, now this is a mono the Tombow Mono Eraser I was speaking of. I prefer this one much better. It's refillable. Um, you can get them off on Amazon. It's the Tombow Micro Zero Eraser. It comes in a round or a rectangle point. I have both. So much easier to go back over with this eraser and get those highlights. It's easy to clean too. I tend to use my nail to just kind of get rid of the dirty edge, but you can also use just a, a carefully a crafting knife or, or um, you know, just something to trim off the edge as you need it. Now I am going to go back in and again, I'm going to darken these, these main lines. I'm going to use my one, my micron point, uh, not point, my micron one, and just darken these main lines, not cover up my shading, but just create a dramatic separation just over the top and still let the shading show through back and forth. Just add so much more. Every step you do. And that's Shattuck. All right. Now we'll do the borders later. I haven't decided quite what I want to do yet. But let's move on to the Tangle Jetties. I'm going to create a, a bit of a separation because I don't want to fill the entire section here with jetties. I just want to create another little string that I can work within. 
And, you know, just because you lay down your main string doesn't mean you can't add things. So I'm going to use jetties just in this section right here. Now jetties is just an elemental shape of an orb or circle and the curve that we add in the middle. I'll demonstrate. Right now I'm just putting down a few bigger circles. Now this is the stripe that I put in the middle and just shade that in. It's just simply two parallel lines that are going across and just darken those, fill those in. And I will put a little line, if you can see that, It's just a little curved line that goes on either side of your darker, thicker, parallel stripe that's in the middle. Just really slightly, just curved. That one got a little close. And I'm trying to make them go in different directions. I'm going to add another bigger one over here. I like to lay down my big ones first and then you fill in with little ones. As many or as few as you want. It's up to you. And then I try to draw those little lines in. I could use even a thinner pen. And then I'm gonna make <clears throat> And then I'm going to make the ones behind. I'm just going to ignore the ones in front, draw the circle as if it's going behind, and then add the striping. I'm kind of paying attention to the direction of the others. It's not a big deal if they go the same way, but it just kind of has a greater dramatic effect. Okay, I will continue just adding them behind around, just kind of seeing where they fit. And they can be various shapes and sizes. Jetties is a drama tangle, and drama tangles have large areas of solid ink, and they really can add a lot of interest to your tile or your artwork. Now the space behind especially a very small one, is called interstice. And we're filling these spaces with small and various sizes of jetties or circles, orbs. And again, I'm just trying to kind of locate the banding and just making sure they're going in different directions just to add that interest and contrast. But just relax and have fun while you're doing this.
Okay, so now before I go on, now by no means do you have to separate your tangles with outlines like I'm doing here. I'm just trying to do a lot of things on one tile just to give you some various ideas. But what I'm doing is ordering that line that I originally, that string that I originally drew because I thought that I would make a little border tangle um, in between. But by no means is that necessary. Tangles fall over each other and look really cool placed together. So now in this section, I'm going to do striping. And striping is really, it's a simple tangle, yet it's captivating and it adds so much dimension. Um, you can do it in so many ways. I'm going to use the one um, micron pen for this because it does take a lot of ink. So now what I'm going to do is just start with a, a string that's a spiral of some kind. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm drawing, but I'm just kind of making a loop and a spiral and going around just something that'll give me a sense of direction of which way I'm going. It's interesting to note that striping is one of the few tangles that is named for exactly what it is. Okay, now I'm trying to find my direction I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with this inside circle. And I'm going to begin by just kind of making a thick, thick line that kind of curves up. And you can make these as dramatic as you want. You can flare them out at the end. There's so many things you can do. But I'm just making these lines kind of go in this one direction within that first perimeter that I chose. It's easier to begin in the middle. And I'm trying to stay with that kind of same type of bend or curve. Okay, I've got that part finished. Now I'm going to go around to the side, one of these sides, and pick a direction to go up or around or whatever. So let's just begin on this side. Okay, so my lines are going to kind of go the other direction and sweep up in a curve, but definitely different from the inside. They're wrapping around, twirling around that middle section. And again, make them as thick, as curvy as you would like. And I'm just going to finish going around till I reach the top of this section. See how this one tucks in when it's finished? When you do the shading and the dramatic effects afterward, you'll get that tucked in feeling where the one shape comes out of the other. So I'm going to wrap around here and a little one here. All right, that's that side. Now we're going to go around to the other side and do the same thing. And I kind of want it to turn this way. Like it's almost tucking into the other shape. Okay, now I'm kind of looking at it and thinking, what do I want to do here? So I am going to do a spiral coming out and going in and around. It's just a little bit different from the one above. 
it's almost connecting to the spiral that's on the left and just continuing. I'll darken these insides. Okay, so now we've got our base of our shape. Now we'll fill in around. So let's darken here. And this one is kind of easy to, to think. Maybe I'll just have it wrap around this side. And again, over here, I'm going to follow this, this um, outline here. I want to stay off that outline for what I'm doing. Normally, like I said, you do not have to separate tangles with outlines. Tangles are beautiful when they fall together and combine into each other. So this is just, um, just for a demonstration. And I'll just kind of finish this one. There we go. That is striping. Now watch it come to life when we do the shading. Now, it's important to give it, when you lay that much ink down, to give it just some extra time to dry. I'm going to start with this inner shape that I began with, and I'm going to lay graphite down to create some depth and separate it from the others. I'm going to go all the way around this um, inner, inner spiral. And we are going to blend all this out and darken it up, but this is just the beginning. I want to define the shapes. I'm going to show you here what it looks like when we blend it. See how it just kind of pops up? It lifts away from the others. You could spend hours just doing stripes. I love stripes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shade as if it were tucking in. And I'm gonna keep darkening up that middle one, but also getting the lines created for that um, middle, middle spiral. And along the edges, On the outside, I just want to create a lot of contrast. That's what I'm really working on. Okay, now we're ready to shade. So let's begin by just spreading some of this graphite out. Don't lose your white. Just kind of use the side of your blender and gently spread out that graphite. If you want to go back and darken anything, you can. But just kind of get a base. along the edges. Okay, now for a more dramatic effect around those shapes, I'm going to take my black ink. I'm using the 05. You could use probably the 01 too, but this one's rather small, so I'm just going to stay safe and go with the 05. And again, I'm just darkening. I'm not going over the entire graphite I just laid down. 
I'm just trying to separate out the shape so that you see the real dark and then you see the graphite and it eventually lightens up into the highlight. And we're going to use this um, tango one more time in um, the bottom section, but I'm going to do it more as a as an abstract botanical. Um, I want to make it more like a flower because striping I use in, in florals and botanicals all the time. I'm going to just add my highlights again, just bring them back. And again, it's easier with that Tombow, <laughs> Tombow mono eraser. And just bring them back so they, they brighten up. And that's stripes. One of my favorite Zentangle Tangles. So many things you can do with it. Okay, now in this section, I'm going to do another form of bales. This is a grid. Bales is also a grid tangle. So I'm going to begin by making a grid kind of on a diagonal. Um, just kind of eyeing it up. If you're doing it horizontal or or something and you want to be very precise, you can you can always use um a stencil, but it's it's more fun to me to just kind of freestyle it. Eye it up. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. I think those are pretty well shaped. Okay, now in the middle these are going to expand out. Sometimes bales can be small and sometimes they can be large. They can be any size, but I'm going to make those rice shapes similar to what we did in the last video and see how it, it just kind of forms. There's just a little half circle on each side of that pencil line kind of makes a rice shape again. This one doesn't go all the way off. It could, it could fall off the border, but I just stop it there. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing. Just little half circles that make a rice shape. And there's one more over here. When you're doing it in an odd um, type of angle, you just kind of make it up where they start and where they begin. Okay, now I'm going to fill in the middle ones and connect them. So you see a flower shape beginning to form. Okay, this one doesn't go all the way, so I'm going to just stop it. And again, these could cross over and go into other tangles. That's, that's the beauty of building on tangles. But right now we're staying in sections. Okay, so I've got my base. Now I'm going to do something different with the middle. I am going to add just one jetty. So if you're more comfortable using a circle, small circle template to make this circle, you can. But it's very easy to just kind of draw in that circle in these spaces. So just one large orb, just like the jetty we did before. And I just want to even them up. And they're as close as I can make them without a stencil. I'm just kind of imagining where they would, would be. I could even have gone bigger, but these will do for now. So probably around, this one's hard because it falls off. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a half a one because I don't think you'd see the whole one. And this one I'm going to do just a partial 
and okay back to this one trying to figure out where it would go because I wanted to stay in line with the others and this one they really don't have room for one so I'm just gonna leave them okay next I'm going to do the band that we did but this band is going to be different first I'll draw the two lines in a holly ball fashion and then I'm going to highlight I'm going to darken just to the middle just to the top as if to leave a highlight and on these jetties I'm going to make them all go the same way so okay and then my little single line on either side and again I'm going to make them go the same direction so put my double line And I'm going to darken just the edge, leave just that little section on top. These look really cool when you do them big too. You could just do an entire section of, you know, big jetties. Little line on either side. And again, just really concentrate when you're doing this because it's really easy to forget and fill in the whole thing which is no big deal because you could go back and dot them white, but it's just nice to kind of leave that highlight if you like that look. Now finish these up. I'm going to go in with my pencil and shade the leaves just at the tips so that that middle kind of rounds up. So I'm just doing just the middle. You could always um, leave a little circle in the middle for a highlight. But I'm just shading each end and then I'll use my blender and smooth them out and it'll give them more of a 3D effect. So there we go. We've got our bales. Now in between, we're going to do something different. We're going to fill these spaces in between around the jetties with a solid black. So we'll use our one pen since it's so thick. Okay, now be careful when you're using this much ink. 
it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. So you do want to be careful that you don't lay your hand over a previously done square if it's just fresh, fresh ink. So once you're, once you're done filling all these in, you do want to let them dry just a couple of minutes. This is a, a heavy, heavy layer of ink but it adds a lot of contrast. And those jetties probably could have been a little bit bigger and popped a little bit more, but it is what it is. <laughs> we learn to work with whatever we do. Now we want to let these dry, this, this ink part. And um, we've got, I've got a mistake here on the, I'll show you how to fix that. We can cover it up easy. Um, next, we're gonna work on the little border that I created under the Shattuck. And it's really easy, nothing complicated. I'm simply gonna take my 0.5 and um, just work in some diagonals. They'll look like triangles. You could do many things with this. You could put circles, you could do any number of things. But since I had circles, I was just thinking of maybe triangles. So I'm just going to simply put a diagonal line going back and forth, giving the illusion of a triangle. And when I get to the Shattuck, I am going to stop just try to figure out where it would have gone, but proceed on the other side. So it looks like that piece is going under. And I'll just finish it off here. Just going back and forth, making the diagonals. Now that I've got those finished up, I'm going to switch to my, my one, and I'm just going to darken in every other triangle. There's just so many things you could do with this, but I just thought it's just one variety of something different. So I'm just going to continue on and blacken every other one. Okay, so now that we've got that done, it appears to be just going under our shattuck. Just kind of a little neat effect. Next, we're going to do striping. But I'm going to do it a little bit different in this section down here. Like I said, I want to make it more of a botanical, kind of a half flower. So let's start with our pencil. And first, I just want to make just an outline of just a half circle around the bottom. It's just going to be kind of a reference point. 
in kind of the middle of my imaginary flower. And I want to put a border around the jetties that's going to stand out. So I'm just adding a little line there. I just wanted to separate it. I want that this bar to kind of rise. All right, so now I'm just going to darken just the edges, rounding the jetties, just giving it a bit of a frame. I'm getting really dark in those edges. And if I wanted to go even darker, I could just, you know, touch it up with my, with my pen. But that'll do for now. And then we'll take our blender and just blend that out from dark to light just so it rises a little bit above and I thought next to the striping that would just be a really neat effect okay now I see a little bit of touch up here I'm gonna just ink it in and just make it darker so that it really pops out Okay, so now I was working with my 0.5, so now with this I'm going to go dark, so I want to get my 1, and these are going to be those thick striping lines again. So I'm using my middle circle as a reference, and I'm just going to start in the middle just by making a big swoop, a big arc, and it can be thick at the ends. It can be thicker than this if you like. You'll get different looks however you decide to do it. But I'm just kind of winding around and making that arc curve more and more. And again, you can make them thicker. Make the white spaces thinner. And this one, I want to start making the turn that goes around the other way. So I'm just slowly beginning to turn. Striping looks really good in different colors too. Really good. Okay, we're going to go this way now. And I'm going to sweep up here. We've done it in brown, in the, in the brown uh, micron pens, and oh, they're just, they're beautiful. Really beautiful. And I just wanted to appear to be going like under that bar that I created. So they're getting smaller. And I'm just trying to make them thick in places. Okay, and I'll finish it up here. That should be good. I see a few places though that there's a lot of white. So I'm just going to add a few more bars. Just for a little extra. Okay, again, before I, I'm, I let this dry a few minutes because that was a heavy layer of ink. Now I'm going to go in and shade. So I want to shade just lightly around the, the inside of what I perceive to be <laughs> the edge of a flower. And um, again, I'm going to darken this up with a layer of ink, but I don't want it touching the bottom. I just want a little. And then I'm going to shade at each, um, each point so that again, I get that that pop of white kind of rounding it and making it more of a 3d effect a slight 3d effect just simply going on each bar Okay, and 
now with our blender, we're going to do the same thing. Now I don't have a lot of room to work with, so I'm just trying to gently just pull the graphite out, but still leave a bit of white on the, on the top. I am losing it a little, um, but just gently can always erase it out. And if I wanted that to be even deeper, I could, I could darken these edges here with pen or, um, more graphite, but this gives you an idea of what I'm doing. And then I'll just smooth this out so it's just a little bit more transitional to light. And I'm going to just darken this line just really with a thick, thick line to separate it between the graphite. And it just kind of, everything just stands out more when you do that. In future videos, I'll get fancier with borders and show you some tangles. But for this one, I decided let's just shade it in. I'm just going to give it some dimension by shading it at the edge and giving it a little shading in various, various places along the line. And when I blend it out, it'll just give it more of a rolling effect. Now for the final, let's just do our Tangle Enhancer and weight that line, darken it up for a more polished look. And you can do that if you see other areas that you would like to darken too. And I'm just using my 0 0.05 micron. Okay, one final effect. I do have a little black running over there. I'm going to correct with my white jelly roll pen. This is a 0.08. But before I do that, I was just thinking I'm going to add um, little white dots here. Now with jelly rolls, they go on very smooth. It takes just a light touch. Never shake your jelly roll. And it's best to store them horizontally. And I actually... I'm thinking I've got to be careful because these are wet so always make sure that they're dry but I'm gonna add just a touch of a highlight to show you how this white actually how this white goes over the black and just a touch of a highlight on these middle bars I don't know if I'll do them all but it's just another thing you can do to, to enhance your tangle. Probably the idea, I think this is dry enough. See how that just disappears? So there you go. So we learned. We learned striping, we learned shaddock, we learned mysteria, we learned jetties, we did some separators, and we started from the basics. We learned dots and we learned strings and and just the very basics of Zentangle. My pen is like, I barely want to go. <laughs> so that's it for today. So that was just kind of a how to get started in Zentangle lesson. Again, a Micron 05. 
um, a Micron One. These two are really great to have. A sketchbook, a piece of paper, a blending stump, or a Q-tip, and a kneaded eraser, and a pencil. If you don't have a mini graphite, a 2B pencil will do just as well. So with that, you can create tangles. So, you know, if you want to build on that and get different sizes, you can order Micron in a variety of sizes, either through Zentangle has them, Zentangle.com, or you can order them on Amazon. Tartian, tortillons are available on Amazon, blending sticks, um, my, as well as Zentangle. Um, jelly rolls, very same. You can get them on Zentangle.com, Amazon. Um, the, my, the Mono Zero, the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser, this I just, I love, I use in professional work, but again, I order those off Amazon. So, and you can get refillables. They come, the first one comes with a set of refillables, but um, they're very easy to get replacements too. And they come in round, um, round erasers or in um, a bit of an edge. So you can, a rectangle, so you can decide. I have both, I, I find needs for both. So, and a sharpener is always nice. So, <laughs> so that's it for today. So this is a very basic um, demonstration just to go through the whole entire process of the steps of Zentangle. And um, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed and um, found something that um, you want to take with you and maybe try on your own. And um, thank you for staying with me and, and, and for watching and I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you're enjoying, I hope you're enjoying Zentangle and the method of Zentangle. And I hope you'll practice. So happy tangling and have a great day. Take care wherever you are and sending much love and thanks again so much for watching. See you soon. This is Lori.